Well, howdy, friends. Brian Fleshig, a matter of Outfitters in the Midwest Fly Fishing Schools, and welcome back to another episode in our series on fly casting. And today, the most requested episode of all time, we're going to be talking about casting sink tip and sinking fly lines. You know, sink tips and sinking lines have become exponentially more popular over the years. In fact, I think these days we sell almost as many, maybe more, sinking lines uh, than we do floating lines. And they've just become an integral part of a modern fly fishing system. And part of that reason is due to our good friend and mentor, Kelly Gallup. I've, I've said this to our viewers so many times, I mean, uh, modern streamers for trophy trout change everything. Um, it's, in fact, I just read a book, um, Josh Greenberg, Rivers, mm -hmm. Rivers sure, of yeah. Sand. Yeah, yeah. Excellent, excellent yeah. book. But he refers, he refers to modern streamers for trophy trout at several times in that book as the book. There was the movie, mm -hmm. and then there was the book that changed our industry forever. I mean, modern streamers for trophy trout and then what you've done since then with all the patterns, you created an industry. You created an entire segment of the industry that has really allowed me and my company to, <laughs> to make a living. I mean, there were times when, I mean, back when I first started, streamers were woolly buggers and mm -hmm. Mickey fins and- and yeah, uh, this big. And now we have a whole side of the fly bin that's dedicated to, to your flies mm -hmm. and articulated flies. And not only that, but the, the sinking lines. Uh, we kind of talked about this uh, in, a, in a separate video, but back when I was growing up and uh, first starting in the industry, we would sell four sinking lines a year. Yeah. And now it's, it's we don't sell as many as floating lines, but right. we sell a lot. Sure thousands and thousands and thousands of sinking lines, sink tip lines. And it has just created an entire industry and it's changed the way we fish. For sure. Yeah. And it's brought a lot of youth into this game. A lot of younger anglers. And not just that, but it was, you know, a lot of, it was just something a little bit more exciting for, you know, kind of like we were talking earlier about watching these bobbers and get a little boring. You know, it's a lot like dry fly fishing if there's not a hatch. Yeah. You know, back when we were kids, or when I was a kid in the 70s, when you would, you just did that. That's what you did. You know, it's hatch matching was coming on, and it's great if you've got a hatch, but that can get really old if you don't. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and like watching the bobber if it's not going down. But yeah, it did, and it brought a lot of, you know, everybody asked me about my contribution. I said, I don't you know. I don't really think about it, that stuff, but the thing that I do think about is guys your age and even younger, you know, a lot younger, it, they're, they're excited about it. It's fun for them. It's just, it's, it's really, that's the cool thing about it. Like I said, it's helped our business and that's, it's pretty neat. You know, the truth is, friends, casting sink tips and sinking lines is even easier than casting floating lines. Heck, the line does all the work for you. And, you know, as we've said before, the less you do, a lot of times the more the rod and the line will do for you. And that's really true when it comes to casting sinking lines and sink tips. Now, all of the things that we've taught you in previous episodes still apply to casting sinking lines. Okay, you got to make sure that your timing is proper. Allow it to stretch behind you. You don't want to be coming forward too soon with that heavy weighted line traveling at 90 miles an hour behind you. You also want to break that wrist as we've often told you. Okay, you're going to form your loop and then break your wrist and drop that rod back. That allows you to start from further back and boy, just like butter, casting a sink tip is easy. And then of course your haul. Your haul with your left hand is super, super important. 
and that does the majority of the work. The less you can do with the rod, the better. Let your opposite hand and the line do the job. But there are a couple of things that are really important when it comes to casting, sinking, and sink tip lines. And first and foremost is you want to make sure that that line and the fly are on the surface of the water before you try to lift them up. Okay, you'll see that I have the line and the fly on the surface of the water. One of the big problems is I think uh, folks allow that line to sink down, whether it's a tip, a head, or a full sink, and then they try to rip it out of the water and there's no way you're gonna fight that resistance. No way you're gonna be able to lift that line out of the water if it's three, four, six foot deep. So getting that line to the surface is of utmost importance. And one thing you might see me do, we've actually talked about this before, one thing you might see me do is I may reach out a little, little further than I normally would. So I might reach, that gives me more time to pull the line to the surface, okay? So I don't normally reach out like this to start a cast, but it, it kind of lengthens my runway and allows me to bring that line and the fly to the surface a lot easier. What's even more important in casting these types of lines and then what you do with your rod and your rod hand is your opposite hand, okay, your line hand. It's so, so, so very critical, okay? And first and foremost, of course, you're going to double haul. Absolutely critical component to casting a sinking line, at casting any fly lines, but of utmost importance when casting sinking lines, okay? The less you can do with the rod and the more you can do with your hauling hand, the better off you're gonna be. I even haul here on that roll cast pickup, okay? And if you, if you do that, this hand's gonna do most of the work. The other thing that this hand does, which is of utmost importance, is that it stops the cast. Yes, you must stop your cast. If you don't stop the cast, it's gonna keep going until it runs out of energy and you're not gonna have any kind of accuracy, okay? So I'm gonna haul, haul, shoot, and then stop it. And that's what allows you to get these streamers one inch, two inches from the bank every single time is learning how to stop at just the right time. Otherwise, you're gonna wind up with your flies up in the bushes, up in the trees all the time. So stopping that cast is of critical importance. And then of course, having your line hand at the ready. Okay, this is a rapid fire style of fishing. So you're gonna make that cast. You're gonna strip, 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 strip. So that line has, that hand has to be at the ready and ready to strip. So haul, haul, stop, and then at that point, by the time the fly hits, you want that line under your index finger, rod tip in the water, and ready to strip. You know, I was recently out in Montana fishing the Madison River, my favorite place to fish streamers, and we stopped along the way to talk a little bit about the importance of my left hand in that style of fishing. You know, I'm here on the Madison River, uh, of course Kelly's home, and it's kind of the unofficial home of streamer fishing. And I think, uh, of course, we use a, a lot of sinking lines, uh, especially the Gallup uh, streamer line from Airflow here on the river. And <clears throat> with this technique uh, and the style of casting of sinking lines, I think one of the most under talked about parts of this is your left hand. And yes, of course, I'm talking about the haul. I mean, the haul, as Kelly told you, the haul is absolutely critical as it is with most casting, but with streamer fishing with sinking tips and sinking lines, the haul is critical. But the other thing that the left hand does is the left hand lets line come and go and it also stops the cast and you know flip uh, our buddy flip palette always talks about it when you're saltwater fishing uh, when you're trying to hit a target you've got to stop 
that line with your left hand. Okay, so it's it's almost as important what your left hand does. And basically, I'm holding tight as I'm casting, and then I can let line out. I'll just open up my hand. I let some line out on the up cast or back cast, and then of course my my wrist is breaking a little bit and I'm dropping the rod tip backwards a little bit. And, and then I'm going to hold tight again and then let go again as I shoot the line. And then in order to hit the bank, when your guide, in our case, Johnny McClure, when Johnny says, put that fly two inches from the bank, the way that I make that happen is I open my hand to shoot the line and then I'm going to stop it. And that's what gets it to turn over and allows you to hit that fly two inches from the bank, an inch from the bank, stop it. Okay. Hold tight, let go, hold tight, let go, hold tight and stop it. So it's really a game of, of uh, line control with this hand that really allows you to be accurate. The haul, of course, makes that cast so much easier. As Kelly told you, there is little you can do with the rod as possible. And I, even today here, it's our second day uh, on the river. It takes me a couple days to kind of get back in the rhythm. And today I found myself so much more relaxed, so much more easy. As soon as you try to overpower a sinking line, you're going to kill it. But it's left hand control that's so important. You're going to hold tight, let go. Hold tight, let go, and stop it. Hold tight, let go. Shoot a little bit of line if, if you want and if you need. You can shoot line on that upcast. Hold tight, let go. Hold tight, let go. Shoot the line, and then you've got to stop it. And that's what gets it to turn over and hit the bank an inch or two from right from the edge, right where Johnny wants it. Speaking of Montana and the slide in and Kelly Gallup, we talked Kelly into sharing some of his pointers on casting sinking tips and sinking fly lines. One of the thing, one of the questions we both get often is about casting casting heavy flies. And I'll show you a little bit about that. I'm not gonna, I don't have a heavy fly on right now. I tend to make my flies light and let the line do the sinking. But first and foremost, when you're, sink, when you're casting a sinking line, the thing you need, especially when you're running these 30 foot uh, heads, and I know that a lot of the steelhead guys don't like you to say head if it's, not in, if it's integrated, but it's still the sinking portion, the forward part of the line, the head. And what you never want to do, if you can help it, is do false casts. And so we're on the lake, and here you would have to a little bit. But what I want you to get used to is two things. One, you have to figure out how to pick your line up. That's a really big part of it. And so if you were fishing on foot or if you are in a drift boat, uh, what you're going to do is you're going to have a, a marked spot that you're comfortable with and you're going to strip your line back come back and you're fishing you're fishing you're fishing and you get here and you just simply do a, a single roll pickup so it goes you flop the fly over on the top of the water do a single back cast and then if at all possible never make two false casts one back cast deliver the fly so here we go we're coming in here and the flies we've, we've retrieved all the way to the boat we're gonna come in, do a single pickup right there. As soon as the fly hits, and I want you to watch what happened right there. I let line slide behind me. And it really helps if you can get used to doing this, where when you pick up, you slip a little line and then deliver. Because if you do, if you do false cast with these things, you're gonna hit two things, you or the rod. And you're gonna wear it either here or here because the line is sinking pretty quickly, and especially if you put a big fly on. So we're gonna come in here, we're gonna pick up, roll it, 
one back cast, a little bit of slip, and forward cast. There's not much more to it. And the beauty of the sinking line is, is that you can feel it behind you. And if you're not comfortable with slipping, still try to do a single cast. You notice how little effort I have, and that's what's really important, is people think that they're heavy lines, they're not really that heavy, they're, they think it's heavy and awkward, and it really isn't, and you don't need a lot of false casts because the head will carry all of this line. Simply back, and want, I want your rod to go back. I like my rod to go almost parallel with the water. Say, two, people don't work with analog clocks anymore, but 2.30, two 3 o'clock. 3 o'clock would be flat like this, so I want it to be up just slightly like that. You're letting the line, you're letting the line go behind you. All right, so I'm gonna start out here. I let the line slide and stop and go. That was a little bit too far there. It's kind of accentuating that. So <clears throat> you're gonna be, you're doing your retrieve. You come in, you get close to the boat or your feet. You do a pickup, slip some line grab it and just go forward. I just cast 50 feet. I mean, with absolutely no effort whatsoever. I've got about 20 feet of running line out, 30 foot head. Watch how easy this goes out. It's just simply get it up here, pick it up, one slip a little and go. And if you weren't standing on it, you would have went 60 feet. So it's just that easy. It's not a difficult thing. But like I said earlier, the thing you want to, the, at all costs, you don't want to be doing this where you're trying to false cast these lines. I don't know if you could see that, but that heavy line starts doing this, right? And these big lazy loops like that. And if you can help it, try to do everything in a single cast. You'll get incredibly accurate with this. Point your rod where you want it to finish. So I'm just going to have it right here. The boat's swinging because it's windy right now. So I'm going to come in. I'm almost you know, ready to do my first cast. I pick it up. I slip, grab it, and cast. It's super simple. Okay, a couple nuances to this cast that... Uh, that need to be addressed is the fact that you are doing this very smooth double haul when you're doing it. So I said to bring your line up here and you do a roll pickup where you just get the line in front of you, right? So you're here and then if you notice I give it a, a single haul back and, a, and your double is the forward one. But look at how I'm not really working this. You'll see a lot of people they're doing this with these things and it's like all that energy in the rod is taking everything you could, how smooth it could be when you overwork it. And if you notice, I do a slight haul there, stop the line and just pull. And I'm hardly moving the rod at all. It's not working me. It's just, a, it's the initiation, the initiation of the line speed with that slight haul behind you. One more time, let me just set this in front of me. Nice soft one here, slip and a pull. And you notice I hardly have to move my rod at all. And I've got, I've got close to 70 feet of line out right now. I've got a 30 foot head and about 30, 35 feet of running line here. Come in and it's again, just critical that, you know, a lot of this when your fly is low, that's what I do this roll pickup. If you try to start with your fly deep, you're, it's really gonna work you. So if you can get it close to the surface, if you can do that right there, that's fine. But usually you're gonna have to do a pickup because the line's moving, right? The, the current's taking it. So short little roll pickup, single haul, a little slip, boom, and out it goes. Piece of cake. You really wanna avoid at all costs trying to pull it back hard like that. You'll see a lot of people do this and they just work the hell out of that rod. You really, at the end of the day, I'm telling you, you, you throw 5,000 casts and you work that shoulder that hard all day, you'll be, you'll be wore out. It's super simple. Single pickup, little haul, slip, pull it back and go. It's not, and it's not a giant haul either. It's just a nice 
pull like this. Doesn't, don't have to work hard. Don't have to overwork your left hand. Just pick it up, slip, pull back with your left hand. It's just that easy, 65, 70 feet. Like butter. Like butter. Just a few other pointers I'd like to uh, uh, give you here is that, you know, in a lot of cases we talk about tight loops. And in this case, I think Kelly may have touched on it, you don't really want a super tight loop, okay? A tight loop with a sinking line is gonna create problems, especially if you're fishing a weighted fly. So you don't necessarily want that tight loop. A much more open and relaxed stroke will do the trick for you. And also having the right rod really makes a difference. A lot of people think that super fast fly rods are gonna be best for fishing sink tips and streamers, and that's just not necessarily the case. You want a rod, like for example, Kelly's Streamer X here, um, that he designed for throwing sinking lines and sink tips, and it's actually fairly soft and flexible in the middle of the rod. And that's what you want. That allows that little more open and relaxed loop. So I can make a really nice relaxed stroke. And like I said, casting these lines becomes just like butter. Okay. And a another tip is there are times, especially when you're fishing a super weighted fly. If you're fishing a heavily weighted fly, you, you at times may want kind of an ovalized stroke. Oh, you don't want to go be really rigid and right over the top, right over the top and right over the top. A lot of times you'll see us make kind of almost like a Belgian cast, okay, where you're going to bring it back, you're going to make your roll cast, and then your pickup is here, and then you might come over the top. So it's kind of an open stroke, which makes this a lot more comfortable. It keeps the line out of the way of itself prevents tangles, and it's probably going to prevent you from whacking yourself in the back of the head. Roll cast pickup, bring it back here, boom, and then it's absolutely just like slicing hot butter. One of the primary reasons why I use sink tips um, uh, for reasons uh, over and above what we've already told you is that I like to fish unweighted flies. Um, I love how the sinking line casts them. And then the action on an unweighted fly is going to be much different than a weighted fly. Uh, again, imagine a weighted fly is always going to have at least a little bit of this jigging action. And, and again, that can be a good thing in certain situations. Uh, but <clears throat> most of the flies I, I like to fish, as you know, my favorite fly of all time is called the Swimming Jimmy, or as Kelly mistakenly calls it, the Swimmy Jimmy. In our world, it's the Swimming Jimmy. You can call it whatever you want, but it's one of the world's greatest fishing flies. This fly has to be fished on a sinking fly line. It can be a sink tip or a, uh, a sinking head or a full sink for that matter. But this fly is absolutely useless on a floating fly line. It does nothing. It, it lays there. Okay. Even if you put a little split shot out in front of it, it doesn't do much. So <clears throat> my favorite fly has to be fished in conjunction with a sink tip or a sinking head fly line. My second favorite fly is called the belly bumper. And this is, uh, I, I think you've seen Kelly and I, Kelly tied this for us one night when we were out in Montana last summer. And the belly bumper is one of my favorite flies for trout, for smallmouth, for largemouth. And heck, I've even been using this for redfish down in New Orleans. And it is also critical, sink tip. Um, how about the Murditch minnow? This is a cult classic smallmouth and largemouth fly. Again, critical. Um, that you've got to fish this on a sink tip. And of course, I still find myself coming back to the one that started it all, the Zoo Cougar, uh, one of the world's greatest um, unweighted fishing flies. But you can still fish weighted flies 
uh, on a sinking tip fly line or a sinking fly line. And one of the things, uh, the sink tip not only helps to get it down and all the things we, we've showed you, but a sinking line actually makes casting weighted flies easier. And yes, that's right, friends. Casting a sinking line makes throwing weighted flies easier. Um, for example, the legendary Sex Dungeon, uh, one of the top selling streamers of all time. Um, I do, by the way, know the story of how this fly was named. We'll save that for uh, another video on a different channel. Uh, how about the Boogeyman? Uh, that's one of the most overlooked sinking flies of all time. A fantastic smallmouth fly, by the way. And the Peanut Envy, I think, one of the most versatile streamers of all time. Uh, modeled after Russ Madden's Circus Peanut, which is also a great fly, but Kelly Gallup's Peanut Envy. In fact, if you've seen any of our Montana videos from summer of 2021, uh, we were fishing uh, the Peanut Envy. Um, and it's kind of a medium weight fly. It's not overly weighted, just with a cone head. Uh, but these are all fantastic on sink tips and sinking lines. But um, I prefer, if I can, I prefer to fish unweighted flies. The action on them is superior in my mind. And uh, just some of my favorite flies are these unweighted streamers, such as the four I've shown you here. You know, one of the single most important parts of fishing sink tips, and this is the part that so many people don't understand, is that we typically, and I'm not gonna say always, but we typically fish very short leaders. And we're talking in the ballpark of four to five foot on average. Sometimes on, a, on an intermediate tip, like the ghost tips, I might go out to six foot, but very rarely. Of course, it depends on the fly that you're throwing. If you're fishing small trout flies in a lake, you might be six, seven, eight foot, something like that. But for the most part, m almost all of your sinking line, and it doesn't matter whether it's a full sink, sinking head or sinking tip, four to five foot. And you're gonna be way better off to build these yourself because it's so easy, okay? And the formula for building one of these leaders is super simple. You're gonna match the butt section of that leader, you're going to match it to the tip of your fly line, okay? And you want a bell curve similar to this, and I'm showing you here, where the, where the butt section may be a little bit stiffer than the tip of your line, okay? That's okay for it to be a little bit stiffer as Flip Pallet taught us. You see that the bell curve here is is a little less of a curve than what the fly line gives me, okay? And this leader formula is just could not be easier. You're gonna match the stiffness of the butt section to the tip of your fly line, okay? And that's it, it, that just is what it is. So for example, I typically use Maxima Ultra Green, okay? You can also use the, another one that we have found that works great for sink tips is the Cortland uh, monofilament leader material. And we'll talk about this in a second. But let's say that I'm fishing, uh, I'm fishing an eight weight, okay? I'm gonna use Maxima Ultra Green for my butt section. And I'm gonna make that butt section two foot. And just because I do this for a living and I fish sink tips these days, probably 70 to 80% of the time that I fish in fresh water, I can tell you that with maximum ultra green, my butt section is 22 thousandths. It is what it is. Okay. Now that may vary when it comes to certain types of fly lines. For example, the Titan tapers from scientific anglers are a little bit more aggressive. They're overweighted. Same with the predators, an outbound short. You may have to go up to 24 thousandths, but you can easily do this bell curve before you tie the knot and you can get an idea. Okay. But in general, on most of the sink tips that I fish an eight weight, my butt section is going to be 22 thousandths. And then I know what my tippet is going to be because that's determined by the fly. And my tippet is almost always gonna be 
typically no less than 12 thousandths. It might even be 13. And for really big and heavy flies, it might even be 15 thousandths. But let's say I'm throwing a swimming jimmy on my eight weight. I throw a swimming jimmy on my eight weight. I can easily throw a swimming jimmy on 12 thousandths. It's fairly light. If I went up to say boogeyman, which is heavily weighted. It's got wool on, on the head. It's going gonna, it's gonna to soak up a lot of weight. I may go to 13 thousandths on that. But regardless, the next section, this middle section, to make my four foot leader, you're just going to split the difference. Okay, if my tippet is 12 thousandths, I'm probably going 17 thousandths on that midsection. You could go 15 thousandths. You know, you could do that as well. It's not gonna it's not gonna hurt anything. The most important thing is that you've got to get the butt section of that leader. The stiffness of the butt section has to match up with the tip of your fly line, or you're never gonna be able to cast and effectively fish a sinking fly line. Okay. And then of course, if your tippet's not right, the whole thing's gonna collapse. You've got to get the diameter of that tippet right in order to throw the fly. And again, that's almost always 12, 13, or 15. I'll tell you a quick little story. I arrived in the Amazon one time. This has been about 12 years ago. Got to the Amazon, fishing for peacock bass. We got out on a bonus half day of fishing when we got there. I went out. We, of course, fishing sinking lines down there like we normally do. I came back to camp that night. I probably caught 25 peacock bass that afternoon. And one of my clients had not caught a fish. And he was not happy with me. And he said, boy, I didn't catch a fish. And if that's the way the week's going to go, I'm not happy. And everybody else is catching fish. And I said, well, we'll call him John. I said, John, let's go have a talk and let's look at your gear. And he had he bought the line from us here at Matter River Outfitters, and, and I'm sure I schooled him on this, but what had he done? He had looped on a store-bought nine-foot leader. Why even fish a sink tip fly line? Especially in that case scenario, okay? If, if, if your sinking tip fly line is, is down here in the water column, and you've got a nine-foot leader, First and foremost, you don't ever want to have loops on sinking lines. Of course, you all know how we feel about loops, but the first thing I do is cut the loop off this line and I snell the proper butt section on there. But if you're fishing a nine foot leader, your fly is probably riding up here. Okay, the fish are down here. That's why you're using that sink tip. Okay, your leader should be no more than four or five foot in any form of fishing. It's kind of a, uh, a rule that you always keep your weight source as close to the bait as possible. And using a sink tip fly line, your weight source is the line itself. Okay. He was fishing six foot, eight foot above the fish's heads. They never saw his fly. I had a four foot leader on there. I was putting the fly in the fish's face, catching fish. It, it makes a world of difference, and it's, one of, and it's one of the most important things to understand about fishing sink tips and sinking fly lines. So casting sinking lines. Uh, you know, uh, one of the great misconceptions is that they're harder, they're hard to cast. They're challenging. No, I can't. Well, you've heard that for years, and it's just, it's just not true, friends. Casting sinking lines is easier than casting a floating line. And as I told you before, it makes casting heavy, heavy flies even easier. So don't believe what you hear and read. So friends, I really hope this has helped. I'm sorry to talk so much, but uh, like I said, the misconceptions about sinking lines are just overwhelming. And uh, we've really set out to clear up some of that mystery. As always, friends, stay tuned. Be sure to subscribe, hit that like button, and don't go anywhere. We've got a lot more coming at you. If you like this video, hit subscribe. It helps out a lot. And check out these videos. We think you might like them too.